It's the three on Plex TV. Oh, yeah. What's good, y'all? It's your boy, Plax, and I am back with another episode of The Three on Plax TV. Uh, once again, shout out to my boy, Marl, for the intro. Uh, the Yeah, this time I couldn't be too loud because Shiley is asleep right now. Um, she's It's like, it's almost 5 o'clock in the morning. I gotta get her up for school soon. But I thought I'd get some videos done while I'm at it. Um, now, at the time of this recording of the video, of this video... It is right before the final four for both the men's tournament and the women's tournament. So it's right before the final four. And so I don't like I, I have no knowledge on who wins or anything like that. But I will give you my opinions at the end of the video, like who I think is going to win the full tourney. Now, I would like to temper the title of this video by saying I don't think that the men's tournament has been bad with what they have as far as players and stuff like that like it's no real like superstars in the tournament this year as far as the men's tournament but with what they've had this year it has been nice it's been enjoyable they've done a wonderful job of what they have i mean like duke and Kansas and Kentucky got knocked out in the first round, which is crazy. Um, Kansas State has been on a crazy run, and I don't think nobody expected, led by uh, Marcus Now. I might um, or Noel. Is it Noel or not Now? I'm gonna call him Now. <laughs> I might do a video on him um, later on, like some like in a few weeks or something like that. But like that's been great. Like that's that's that was beyond the Cinderella story. Unfortunately, they they won't make it to the final four. But I didn't even expect them to make it this far, and I definitely didn't expect a five eight point guard, twenty four year old point guard to dominate the way he's been doing. So shout out to him and Kansas State, um, and fucking Florida Atlantic and San Diego State are in the final four right now. That's that's madness right there. <laughs> That's talk about March fucking madness. Just the three things that I named, like like come on, Duke, Kansas, and Kentucky got knocked out in the first round. That's unfucking heard of. I don't think, I don't think some shit like that has never had all three of them teams. Maybe a couple of them, maybe, but like in the first round, just gone. That's that's madness. Now that's what. But I'm saying that to say that it hasn't been bad, but. The Women's March Madness NCAA Tournament has just been better, in my opinion. Now, let me start off with South Carolina. South Carolina, the Gamecocks, they, which is a crazy, I still feel like that's a crazy name. I understand it's a job, but I think that's just a crazy name for a team. But South Carolina, I expected them to dominate. That's just what they do. Don Staley is an amazing coach. They got an amazing team. They've had an amazing team for the past like four or five years now. That's just what they do. Like they they the first game they beat South Florida by thirty one points. Just just ran through them like it was nothing. Like it was just it was just another Tuesday to them. Like they just ran through them, and that was it. And they do that through team play. And just impeccable fucking defense, bro. Impeccable fucking defense. The way they just they just smother people. You know what I'm saying? Like they just they like fucking like lions or something like that. Like when they get they prey, they just pounce on you and smother you and there's nothing you can fucking do. And it's just over. And you you, you look at the scoreboard and you're like, damn, we're we're down twenty points and, and it's the half. <laughs> we're we're down twenty points at the half. Oh no. And and Aaliyah Boston, just like I, I look at I look at South Carolina as like the college women's basketball version of the Spurs, in the sense that they play team basketball, they're dominant on defense, and Aaliyah Boston is the re the basketball reincarnation of Tim Duncan. I love Aaliyah Boston, like she's 
she just so she's Mrs. Fundamentals. Like she just she got an immaculate post game. She can knock down the three. She rebounds. She plays immaculate defense down low. She could switch on guards if you need her to. She's a leader, a constant a constant leader. Like she she continuously leads that team, whether they got rookies, whether they got vets, whatever they got on the team, she makes it work. And just Dawn Staley. Dawn Staley is just amazing. Um, she's an amazing player, a Hall of Famer. She probably, when I bring back uh, GOAT conversation, I'm definitely going to do one on Dawn Staley, of course. But she's just, just South Carolina, they're just doing what I expected of them. So that's not really a surprise, but that's just part of why it's been better where you could look at a team and you know what they're going to do. They're going to dominate. So like that, just, just shout out to South Carolina. And Leah Boston um, is averaging 13 points, nine rebounds, two assists, two blocks, shooting 57% from the field and 81% from the free throw line. Again, her numbers ain't like jumping out to you. You're not like, oh, like she's just dominating, but she that's the thing she don't need to because they're playing team basketball and it show it everything doesn't show up on the box score, but you could just see when you watch the game her impact and how much she's doing and how she's keeping the game flowing and the team flowing and everything like that. Just a huge shout out to South Carolina. I, they doing what I expected of them, so I guess I guess that's not. I guess you don't really add that, but in a part in a way you can. It's predetermined that they're gonna do that. It's predetermined they just gonna dominate and do their thing. Next, I, I got UConn. UConn, I was excited to see. Unfortunately, Paige, Paige Buchers, who's one of my favorite players just in general right now, she um, is injured, and I think she'll be back next year. But she's injured, and she's been, like, coaching on the sidelines and, and helping her teammates, stuff like that, which has been great. But I'm sure everybody, including myself, would rather have her on the court. Even without her, though, like, Ozzy Fudd, the sophomore, she has been leading UConn like she a senior, man. Like she's been really doing her thing, even without Paige out there with her. I feel like UConn definitely going to be back for sure next year with Paige healthy and Ozzy another year older. I believe, I believe next year is Paige's because she a junior right now. So next year is her senior year. I think she's going to be healthy. I think her and Ozzy, is going to really make something happen. Do I think they win? I'm not sure. But I definitely think they're going to dominate and they're going to go far in the tournament next year. But Ozzy, like, she she did her thing, man, as a sophomore. Like, she, she averaged 15 points, two assists, two rebounds, and shot 45% from the field. In the last game, in the last game that they ended up losing, unfortunately, she... She played damn near the whole game. She played like 38 minutes of the game. Like, that's that's a leader. That's like, okay, we're going to lose. We're going to lose on my back. You know what I'm saying? If we're going to lose. We're going to lose on my shoulders. I'm going to be out there, and I'm going to make it happen. My running mate ain't here right now, but fuck it. And I'm going to keep cooking it. And she, they gave it to them. They gave it to everything they played to played against. It's just, it just wasn't enough. And the women's college game is just filled with so much talent because – because they have like players that stay all four years or three years or something like that. So it's just filled with so many like vets and talented players and stuff like that, that it's tough for one person, especially a sophomore to really change the tide. Now when Paige come back, UConn going to be scary, but UConn is always scary. So <laughs> I think they won like out of the last like 25 years, I think they won like 20 of the championships or some crazy shit like that or 18 of the championships. So they they always going to be in the running. But man, just I just I just wanted to give Ozzy her flowers because she led UConn by herself. I, well, not completely by herself. Obviously, her teammates helped and played well, but she led them as the best player on the team. And she did a wonderful job as a sophomore. So shout out to her. And they're gonna be scary next year. Then you got oh, <laughs> these is these are two the the Cavender I think it's Cavender the Cavender twins in Florida. Now they I don't mean no disrespect by this, but they are clout hoopers. And what I mean by that is it's a it's I might talk about it on here one of these weeks. But clout hooper is a hooper that only that plays basketball and only plays well for the clout. Because to like publicize they TikTok or their YouTube channel or anything like that. Other cloud hoopers are like Josh Giddy and uh shit. 
Tristan Thompson, like Tristan Thompson only in, in the NBA, so he get more holes. You know, what I'm saying? you know, what I'm saying players like that, like Kyle Kuzma, players like that that only play basketball, only play well because they want the clout from it. Now, I, I categorize the Cavender Twins as that because they are very prominent on TikTok. TikTok, extremely popular on TikTok. They do a lot of like, um, like during the off season, they do a lot of like uh, open gym runs and stuff like that for they TikTok. Uh, they do a lot of TikTok dance, stuff like that. I think they're even in talks of joining the WWE, I believe, which is awesome. I think they they super athletic and they're very beautiful women. I think, I don't know how charismatic they are. Well, I think they are pretty charismatic because they, they manage their TikTok and they've been blowing up on TikTok. So, they've, so I think them and WWE would be cool. But I had a preconceived notion of them and they proved me wrong. Because they took Florida very far further than I expected. And they were basically the leaders. And even one of the twins against like Villanova or Indiana or something like that, she hit a couple clutch free throws and she shushed the crowd. She was like, shh. Like it, I was just like, oh my God. She got she got that dog in her. They got that dog in them, and they they definitely proved me wrong. I'm not saying they're not clout hoopers. I still think they are clout hoopers, but they showed me more. They showed me more in this tournament. Obviously, they not in it no more, but they just they came to play. They came to play. Um, people, I'm sure I was the only one that expected certain things from them. And they proved me wrong. They proved everybody wrong. So I just wanted to give a huge shout out to them. And I have enjoyed watching them play. I believe one of them plans on playing again next year. The other one isn't really too sure on what she wants to do. But I hope they team up again next year um, and just give it one more run because I think they could go further. Especially, you know, if they get like some better players around them and stuff like that, I definitely think they can go further. So shout out to the Cavender Twins. Follow them on TikTok as well. I might throw their TikTok in the, in the link in the description down below. Haley Van Lith out of Louisville. I've been watching her the same amount of time and watching Paige because in high school they was like highly touted high school players and they was kind of like the the battle. It was Paige and Haley, a couple other people too, but like they were the main two people talked about when they was in high school. And Haley just doing Haley Van Lith things, man. Like she's averaging twenty. She was averaging twenty in the tournament, just making it look easy, trimming folks. She was cooking so so well. That at the end of the game where, you know, where you shake hands with the other team and other coaches and stuff like that, she cooked this team so bad that the girl cursed her out in the lineups, slapping each other up. Obviously, the con the constant professional she is, she just said she said a little something back, and she just kept it moving. She just went to the locker room and kept it moving. But like you know how bad you got to cook somebody, <laughs> you know how bad you got to work somebody to the point where they like the game is over and they still like yo, yo don't let me see you again. I'm gonna fuck you up. And Haley was like, bro, leave it on the court, man. <laughs> you you can't check me, man. Just that's that's just the bottom line. You. Obviously, like, you cook somebody so bad that they want to fight. Not because you're playing dirty or nothing like that. You're just cooking them so bad that they want to beef you. I think that's that's just beautiful, man. That's top tier. Bad. I feel like every Hooper wants to get to that point at some point. In the national, uh, not championship, but, like, in the NCAA tournament, you cook somebody so bad that her and her teammates wanted to beef you. That's that's Haley Van Lith, man. Like, she she's been... Dominant, like I said, she's been averaging basically about twenty points the entire tournament and during the season. And as great as she is, she was as great as Haley Van Lith is. She she was stopped when she ran into Caitlin 
motherfucking Clark. The female Steph Curry. <laughs> Fuck. I don't. Caitlin Clark. I've never seen no shit like this on a college level. I've been watching basketball for a long time. I've never seen this type of performance. And even Magic Johnson said, like, I've never seen a college player perform the way on a consistent basis the way she has. Jordan didn't do it. Magic didn't do it. Larry Bird didn't do it. This is Magic Johnson words, not mine. You haven't seen some shit like this since, like, Kareem and Bill Walton. Like, the dominance level, the consistent dominance level that Caitlin Clark has been showing. Like, Jesus fucking Christ. She packed up Haley Van Lith, the the woman that I just was praising. The woman has been a top five player since high school, since she was a freshman in high school. She packed her and her team up with a 40-point triple-double. 40. You heard me. A 40-point triple-double. Like, it was just... It, it's what it is and Haley being you know the the competitor that she is was talking shit to to Caitlyn like she was talking shit to Caitlyn and Caitlyn said and I quote which this is just what they call on camera she could have said something else but this is what it looked like she said and I quote you're down 15 points shut the fuck up What do you do? Then you shut the fuck up, right? <laughs> you got to shut the fuck up. Because it was like three minutes left in the game. Haley was talking her shit. And Caitlin was like, you're down 15 points, man. Shut the fuck up. Just stop talking to me. And you, it's not, you could really say in that situation, the person that you're guarding got 40 points, a 40-point triple-double, a historic game, and your team is down 15 with three, four minutes left in the game. You could try to come back, but it's going to be tough. You got to shut the fuck up. <laughs> you got to shut the fuck up at that point. That's that's your only options. Or try to win the game. That's, that's really it. But you can't talk anymore until you actually get the job done. You know what I'm saying? She's just been doing it all. Like, she... she the entire season, the entire season she's been cooking, but like it's really just been prominent in the tournament because of so many eyes on her now. Like shooting logo threes, like shit that shouldn't even go in. That's why I call her the the female Steph Curry. She she's averaging twenty seven points per game, seven rebounds, almost eight assists, which is damn near basically averaging a twenty seven point triple double, damn near forty seven percent from the field. Just scary, just scary shit, scary shit. Caitlin Clark, and I can't wait to see her in the NBA. I don't know if she is a junior or a senior. I don't know what like level she's at, but man, I can't wait to see her in the league. It don't even really matter what team she go to because she's gonna be exciting. But like, man, and that's that's what I was saying more so about like not having stars. Because the men's side, there's not really stars. Like, you got Grady Dick, but I don't consider him a, a superstar. Uh, Drew Tim, I don't consider him a superstar. Uh, Marquis, no, no, even though he's he played very well, I don't consider him a superstar. I don't consider them highly touted players. The women's side, Aaliyah Boston, Caitlin Clark, Haley Van Lith, Paige Buchers, even though she was, she was hurt, Ozzy Fudd, and then the lady out in LSU, the lady out on LSU, Angel Reese. Now, it's just like, it's just so many like great players out and about in comparison to the men's side where it's just like average guys that most of them probably won't even make the league. You know what I'm saying? That's another reason why I felt like it was just so much better, just the star power itself. But LSU, I was talking about defense with South Carolina but like South Carolina, that's just what they do. They've been doing that for four or five seasons now. I think maybe even longer since Dawn Staley been there. LSU has come out of nowhere to me. Maybe I wasn't tapped in, but they've come out of nowhere to me. And Angel Reese, if if Aaliyah Boston is Tim Duncan, Angel Reese is Kevin Garnett. Angel Reese is Kevin Garnett by far. 
Like, she's averaging 23 points, 15 rebounds, two assists, two steals, two blocks, shooting 57% from the field. Just dominant on both sides. Just complete and utter dominance on both sides of the ball. And the whole team is just great defenders. You know what I'm saying? And it's just nice to watch. I watched some of their highlights. I watched a couple of their games. Their personalities, the LSU personalities, like the TikToks they be making and, and the little clips they be doing. Like they, I just like them as a team, and I enjoy watching them. And Angel Reese, like I said, she's if, if Aaliyah Boston is Tim Duncan, Angel Reese is definitely Kevin Garnett. Um, I like to give comparisons just so when people watch, they understand a little bit better what I mean. But definitely, like, man, LSU is, they also very scary and not a team to take lightly because they just, as much as, like, any other team could just take over and just dominate you and you look at the scoreboard and you're like, oh, we're down. We're down 15. <laughs> we're, fuck, we're down 15 at the half. Goddamn. Angel Reese got 20 and 10 already. Like, then two blocks and two steals already. Um, Yeah, like, I just... I've just enjoyed the games more. I've, I've been more excited for the games. Like, right now, this is right before the Final Four that I'm recording this. Um, It's probably over. The tournament's probably over by the time this comes out. But... Like I've just I'm just excited for the games more than the men's games. You know what I'm saying? Like in the beginning it was it was exciting because like oh the guy like the top teams got knocked out. But besides that, and then like the seller the, the Cinderella story with uh with uh, Marquise and his team, uh but Kansas State. But like it hasn't been nothing super exciting to me on the men's side. On the women's side, I just been constantly excited for just matchups in certain games. Like Iowa is about to play South Carolina. That's fucking Caitlin Clark versus Aaliyah Boston in the Gamecocks. Like defense versus offense. Uh, the immovable force versus the uh, what? What is it? The 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 unstoppable force against the immovable object. That's what it is. Like just that alone is exciting. And I just can't wait to see what happens now before I end this out. Um, And I'm not going to change it or nothing like that. I hope you guys believe me. I'm going to just, I'm going to give you my predictions. So LSU is going to beat Virginia Tech and go to the national championship. I think they're going to beat Virginia Tech pretty decisively. I'd be surprised if LSU loses. And I think Angel Reese, per usual, is going to have a really good game, like 25, 15, that type of game. And I'm going with South Carolina to make it to the national championship. I wouldn't be surprised if Iowa did come out and win because Caitlin Clark is just that fucking good. But I do have South Carolina, like, closing it out and making it to the national championship. <sighs> And I have South Carolina winning it all. This is tough. This is a tough one. Because LSU, South Carolina, and Iowa are three very good fucking teams. Um, I think the only thing I can say, no disrespect to Virginia Tech, because Virginia Tech could surprise me too. They could be like, yo, this nigga said we wasn't going to win, and we won. But I just, those three teams have been dominating the entire season, the entire tournament. So I think it's going to be them, one of them three teams to win. I'm going with South Carolina. I wouldn't be surprised if Iowa came out and somehow beat them. My only thing is, it's a team versus kind of one person. Caitlin Clark has kind of been leading her team almost on her own. And I don't know if that's going to work against a team like South Carolina or a team like LSU. Um, LSU also could win it. They also could win, win it, but South Carolina, they've won before. They've been here before. Dawn Staley has been here before. I think this Aaliyah Boston senior, senior year, she would love to close it out with a national cha- another national championship. I just think they take it home, me personally. Um, if I'm wrong, talk shit to me in the comments down below. Let me know I was wrong, 
in the comments down below because I believe by the time this come out, the tournament is already over. Um, yeah, but I'm going. I'm going with South Carolina. I'm sticking with them. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if LSU or Iowa won as well. If Virginia Tech won, I'd be super shocked. Now that's that's a shocker right there. I'd be like, wow, that's fucking nuts. But um, yeah, this has been another episode of the three on Plax TV. Uh, let you let me know what you thought of like just my opinion in general in the comments down below. Uh, have you enjoyed the women's tournament more than the men's tournament? Um, have you enjoyed the men's tournament more than the women's tournament? If so, tell me why. Um, make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe, make sure you ding that notification bell so you know every time I drop a video. Let me know some topics you would like to hear my opinion on regarding basketball. And most of all, YouTube. I love you guys. Peace. It's the three on Plex TV. Oh, yeah. Plex TV.